Hello and welcome back to the Rattle Mind Podcast. I'm Roy and join me is my fantabulous, amazing, fantastic co-host. Panji, if my computer doesn't restart on its own again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got to blame updates for everything, but. Yeah, it was, it was, I finished the download for the NVIDIA graphics card, the update, and then I was moving my mouse towards the update later button not now it was I, I hadn't even hovered over the button yet and my computer starts acting like the fish from spongebob that's obsessed with chocolate and it was just going restart restart <laughs> <laughs> restart <laughs> and it just like restarted on its own it, it was it was hella determined and here we are we're trying this again take two take two and yeah Hollywood shut down. Spirit Halloween has already taken over. We had a long spiel about this and we were talking, joking this about it. This isn't funny anymore, right? Not. I, I know. This. It's terrible. Darn it. Ah. All right. Recap. Uh, Halloween. Halloween. Hollywood. You know, they shouldn't make the two words so similar. No, they shouldn't, but you know what? It <laughs> makes the whole Spirit Halloween sound words. even funnier. It's Spirit Hollywood. Like <laughs> 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 They have the costumes for it. Well, why not? <laughs> yep. Uh, no, uh, recap. Hollywood shut down. Writers, actors on strike. I heard it from Mark Flyer. Uh, Spirit Halloween has taken over. It's only been a few days, but we know how they how they do. And uh, uh, neither of us know why there's a strike, but here yeah. we are. It's like I know <laughs> some of it, and most of it's not like important. But I mean, seriously, <laughs> I mean, what what I know of it, it's not it's not something that would be important. But it's the the real problem with it is the timing. I believe i said this the last time with the writer strike that might that... have been as the computer was shutting down <laughs> yeah probably um but basically as far as i know this is the worst time for actors and writers to go on strike because mm. there's no money at the studios most I of these studios story. just can't afford to you know add six more people onto their roster of writers for a single show or I don't even know what the actors are asking for. Either way. It's bad timing. Well. I mean, even on an otter note, and here's my proof. I'm doing, if I could type in EY, I type wrong. We'll just do that. Disney stock. This is just today, the trading for today, which oddly is actually up a little bit, but let's look at the five day. It is downhill. So I found of, an article about the about why there's a SAG and act, Hollywood actor streak, but um, just uh, go ahead with what you found and then we can get into that. All right. Well, basically, just looking at Disney alone, the studio is collapsing. Um, Bob Iger is back in charge, and he's saying that they're probably going to sell off ABC um, Freeform, which used to be ABC Family. Why they changed it to Freeform, I don't know. Um, and probably FFX or FXX or whatever it's called. They're probably yeah. going to sell off their cable channels to try and balance their budget but as you can tell the uh news of that is not going down well for stockholders so they're selling i mean just jumping to the whole one month i mean just the last what that's on the the 12th yeah so in the last four days they've seen a drop in stock price of what four percent almost five percent so yeah uh -huh. that's not going to go down well all right but you said you found right so 
Um, this article breaks it down pretty good. Uh, apparently, there are three players okay. in the strike. Um, you want to give me the link there... so I can put it up on screen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are so professional here. I couldn't, I couldn't decide to do it um, in DM or in the group. Or I should probably do it in the group. Actually, hang on, let me. <laughs> I take it back. Don't look. Don't look. Don't, at don't, it. don't, 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 don't do it now. Oh, no. Just chat. That, that's as good a, a group as any to post this. There we go. Oh. All right. So the three players we're looking at here. We already talked about SAG, the Screen Actors Guild. Um, apparently in tandem with the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, AFTRA. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's what AFTRA stands for. Okay. Yep, their union speaks for more than 160,000 members who include actors, stunt coordinators, voiceover artists, and background actors. The writer... Oh! That reminds me of something Mark Plyer said about this strike. He said that one of the reasons that um, he and people he knows are getting concerned, what they're trying to do is hire background actors, but then scan them and reuse oh, yeah. their AI image yeah. and just pay them once and never have to pay them again. Right. You know? <laughs> This is the one thing that I, you know, wholeheartedly agree with for the strike. AI yeah. should have nothing to do with movies or anything like that. I mean, your your AI right now is just regurgitated stuff that's already out there, as in it's bits, words, and images, and then just mash it all together and hope it sounds real. I mean, it's come a long way, and we all know it's going to get a consciousness of its own any day now, you know? Yeah, <laughs> when the singularity comes. recording movies, you know? But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the singularity. <laughs> Strange, which, funnily enough, was the name of the last event on No Man's Sky. <laughs> it's called the singularity event. Um, It might still be going on if I'm not. No, no I don't think so, actually. But anywho... um. Yeah, so actors <laughs> and voice actors and what have you. The second group is the WGA. Which is the, the Writers' Ro Actors. Exactly, Writer. the Writers' Guild of America. Yeah, there we go. Union that represents writers in film, television, radio, radio and online. Huh. And the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. Amptipi. <laughs> Represents major film studios like Disney and Paramount, which you were talking about Disney. Which they American are not. American television networks like Fox and NBC and streaming giants like Netflix and Amazon. Which this, this, this is who they're going, who the writers and actors are going up against. Just for clarification. It's, it, yeah, it's the players involved. Yeah. So this is, yeah. Three three players two sides yeah <laughs> yep um of course the first big section after that is money <laughs> yeah of course with streaming becoming so popular um and i completely aren't... understand the argument for this because yeah my understanding of the argument is because of streaming the actors are not getting paid what they should because they're going straight from production to streaming and there's no royalty or benefit that's actually coming back to the actors or the yeah. or the actual people who worked on the film. So right. it's like if, when it originally, you know, the studio would hold it and then the studio would pay everyone their royalties and stuff. But now because of streaming, there's no clarity on how many people are watching something and how many people are or why something's getting canceled like netflix just canceled a whole bunch of stuff disney oh, took no, a lot of again. stuff yeah disney took a lot of stuff off of disney plus just because it oh. was wasting room in their servers because people weren't watching it but there was no hard evidence that people were not watching it so how can we tell should so, that be easy to track? That, oh that yeah it is so easy. it's so, easy for the know, company to do that 
Yeah. Yeah, but the problem is, is that there's no clarity for the writers or the actors. Why are my, Why did I just lose a contract to do another season of my show that I get positive press about? And I've seen people talking about right. and they're all like, this is great. This is great. And yet you're shutting us down. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's income they were relying on. Right. And it's not just the writers, the actors, it's the editors, the. Right. Sound Phone engineers. Crew. Yeah. The crew. Yeah. So these are the things you can understand. It's when they start to mandate that. Jim Bob down in the mail room gets to have a say on what the story is for next episode. Why does Jim right. Bob get a say? Jim Bob is over in the corner picking his nose all day. <laughs> and the the best part about all this though, in my opinion, is that like while these big huge studios are have been for decades like looking down their nose at like small time creators, like on YouTube, like content creators, yep. even TikTok and all that stuff. You have the 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 giants of these platforms like Markiplier and Charlotte Dobre literally filming their own movie. Right. And they're paying for it out of <laughs> pocket and stuff. Yeah. And they're producing stuff with no problem because they made it big doing their own thing, being themselves, doing what they love. <laughs> and it's just kind of ironic in my humble opinion, but right. So yeah, money. <laughs> uh, and... SAG after says members are striking for more equitable division of profits from movies and television. But according to amp to SAG negotiators chose to forego the highest percentage increase in minimums in 35 years in favor of going on strike. Yeah. Which I can understand huh. them. Well, how low was it that, you know, it got to this point. Exactly. It's a high increase from, you know, a recent 70% decrease, then it's not high. <laughs> yeah. Know? And the other problem with the whole money debate is, is that they're now going off of numbers from during the pandemic when people were at home and watching mm. stuff streaming. Mm -hmm. So they were, they're trying to say, Hey, you owe us money for all this streaming stuff. But now all the streaming sites are starting to crash in their viewership or subscribers. So they're like, yeah, no one's staying at home 24 seven binging the OC for the 37th time right? in a month. So we're not getting anything anymore. So now everything's all messed up. The numbers are all out of whack for everyone. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So, so we scroll down a little bit and the next section says striking for healthcare. And under that is the future of AI, which we touched on. So that's right. kind of cool that like um, something I heard from Mark Pliers in here. <laughs> but the healthcare thing, that's that's pretty serious. Uh, dual member of SAG and the Writers Guild, who is now running for SAG after a president. She said the majority of members in the SAG union barely make above minimum wage. What? Yeah, because... Uh... SAG it is covers everyone who's on there. So if you're on a production and you're just in there as a uh, background character. Uh, the bulk of our membership are career background actors. She said. Right. Yep. These people are barely making $150 a day. Yeah. And, and they don't act every, they're not a five day a week kind of thing, you know? <laughs> like, right. And they're coming in for like a full day's work and they're, doing stuff, standing under the hot lights, walking around the entire time. So mm -hmm. I, I understand all of that. And yes, the, all of these things are just so stupid that they're not taking oh these into God. consideration. You have to make a required 26000 a year to qualify for healthcare coverage. And only 15% of that 160,000 members make that threshold. Wow. She said elder actors are kicked off the insurance plan after they turn 65. <sighs> oh, yeah. 
like I said, Hollywood is a terrible place. I, if you want to be an actor, try stage for now. Uh, <laughs> be a Stick theater to actor. <laughs> I know you won't make any money off it really, but at least you'll get to have more fun. Right. Uh, the future of AI. Oh yeah, I had you to bring the article. Predicted off it would of... be the Hollywood's first major strike in decades. You don't say. Well, the real problem is, is that uh, with AI, uh, James Earl Jones has given his vocal likeness over to AI. Mm -hmm. He has actually literally signed it off in his will and everything that they can mm -hmm. recreate his voice for anything they want. That's cool. cool. That's one way to live forever. Cool, yes. But also, what happens to the voice actor that's up and coming that could have been similar in the role and could have gotten that money? So, I mean, but I mean, James Earl Jones is like a legend, though. Right. Like, this isn't about. But this I is mean... part of the argument is that AI is going to take over by you know, simulating old actors' voices and you won't need the actors anymore, so why bother? So, and then they're going to use well, you digital keep... effects to keep changing people's faces so that you they can... look like actors in the past. You can only use a voice so much, especially for a main actor. Like, <laughs> like you can't use it in, like, back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back movies. Like, you are eventually going to want to use other people to not run it stale and you know keep beating a dead horse you know <laughs> like well that may be true but what i'm saying is that this is the future outcome that they're fearing is that they'll just get enough people have enough audio clips of mark hamill harrison ford um yeah oh, lawrence serious, fishburne big yeah big actors and just clone their voice and you know i just don't think the public would let them get away with it yes they would uh, i mean there, as much as i line with everything there's there a line is, with everything but you will it's tickling that nostalgia bone that they're gonna get and that's oh, what they're yeah, banking that's, off that hasn't of exactly worked out at all no lately. it hasn't but that's also because uh disney Disney bought everything. That's the problem. Um, so Disney's been overproducing is the problem, really. Exactly. You can't overdo it. You just can't. And any respectable... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Any respectable recording studio... <laughs> what is it called? What's the word? Uh, that recording studio is not a friggin' live talk show. It's a... <laughs> uh, any respectable people who run movies and stuff. Oh, there are no respectable people who run movies. Are you nuts? Actually, there are oh, a handful. God. There are very few. Excuse you. You have I to. I wasn't even done making my very specific point just because I couldn't remember the damn word. Oh no, I had to attack the movie industry though. I... They're such a low-hanging fruit. Yeah. Well. It's like. Yeah, they are anymore, I guess. But, um, filming studio, I guess. Any, any, anyone worth their salt wouldn't which run a beloved actor's voice into the ground like that but it would be nice to have that like yeah there, you know because but see i'm sure our... disney would run them into the ground at least current disney would if they had yeah. an, if they had a strong enough capability which at this moment no one does i'm sure disney would be putting james earl jones's voice in everything I mean, documentaries and stuff like that that Disney produced, they would do that. Um, but, and the studios that you really want to root for anymore are the semi-independent studios. The ones that aren't grounded so deeply in the past of the industry. 
So at least that's my opinion. It's like the current number one or number two movie out there. Um, Mm -hmm. Sound of Freedom was made by an independent film studio and it's got to number one on world word of mouth only and the quality of the actual movie of course the content of the movie is heart-wrenching and i haven't been able to see it but that's because there's absolutely no movie theaters anywhere near me and then it's only running in a limited amount of theaters so it's even harder to find yeah, I'm so. sure movie theaters, I mean, COVID was bad enough, but like movie theaters, like with streaming on top of that, yeah, they, they've got to be shutting down on left and right. Another thing I have not researched, so don't hold me to this, but. <laughs> right. Well, the only movie the theater. Google movie theater industry. <laughs> yeah. The only movie theater that was actually closest to us shut down before COVID. So it's like you had two screens and, and I understand, but I wanted to see a movie at some point. So yeah, I have not seen a movie in theaters in like five years. It's been so long for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a lot of articles from 2022. Yeah, there probably will be a ton of articles like that. Finding ones that are current is going to be a pain. Yeah. There's like, one. Okay. July 13th, 2023. Don't be so... You have little faith, sir. I have I little mean, faith insane. in the internet and people but who are writing do... articles. I have oh faith God. in you. I don't have faith in the internet and people who oh, write articles. Oh, but it's related to the strike. <laughs> it's related to streaming. No, it's related to the strike, not streaming. Oh, the strike. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess that makes sense, but... It's yet yet another thing that the timing of the strike is... Well, this one's called Movie Industry is Not Dying Because of COVID, just changing. Hmm. Uh, I'll give them that. It is changing, and it is changing a lot, and COVID accelerated the change is what the problem is. Yeah, yeah. It, it, we were moving towards a lot of things of where we're at now it was just amplified skyrocketed speeds it would if the lockdowns never happened i bet you we'd still be like five years out from something like this you know where ai is taking over and everyone wants to go on strike (laughs) um most expensive no just want wow the breakdown on this uh this is a little much current statistics on this topic let me see okay cinema and film Okay, can I see how that's changed for one country? Not like a bajillion. You know what? Screw this website. (laughs) (laughs) That's the problem with most of these websites. They're hard to find the information you're looking for. They give you the big flashy title, and then you end up having to dig for hours on end just to try and find what you're looking for. Though the actual screen actors, the article we pulled up about the strike was quite helpful actually uh, let's see how is it going up according to this market chart that doesn't make sense i'm looking at a chart that has it gradually going up from 2018 all the way to last year. Oh, it says, oh, companies in the U.S., both public and private, ranging in size from small businesses to market leaders. You know what? 
You know what I mean, internet. Why do you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> Movie theater. Popularity? Yeah, I'm not finding too... Yeah, I think no, I'm gonna look at a last year article. It's the best I get. Probably. I mean, the article I found doesn't tell too much. It's just a bunch of blah 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 statistics. Huh. After two years of chaos brought on by the coronavirus pandemic, theatrical industry insiders are cautiously optimistic about the future of movie going. We'll keep an eye on variants and how they may or may not affect theater capacities going forward, but generally speaking, there's a lot of films coming and markets are open with few exceptions. Wow, they were so, they were optimistic back in <laughs> They were. <laughs> <laughs> we were excited about the slate that we have for 2022, Jim or the president of domestic theater. This might even be late 2021. Yep, December tw December twenty third, twenty twenty one is when this article was posted. Oh, they're poor predictions. <sighs> the Faith. data firm. So this is kind of funny compared to like the strike we're dealing with now. The numbers tell a story of an industry still far from recovery, despite signs of hope, like Spider Man: No Way Home, which opened over the weekend with 260 million at the U.S. box office, the second biggest domestic D but of all time wow i'd heard good things but dang. <laughs> the data firm comscore is projecting the north american box office to end the year around 4.4 billion nearly double 2022 2020's total wow but down more than 61 percent from 2019 Huh. Huh. Comscore is projecting the global box office to end the year with more than 20 billion up from 12 last year, but down from 2019's 42 billion. So apparently 19 was pretty dope for movie theaters. And then 2020 happened, of course. Right. And it plummeted. But then it went up. In 2021, I guess as people adjusted to the new restrictions, maybe? Well, I could see that in a way. Because I'm betting that, you know, the states where you could go to the theaters, open, or because there were some states that had the lockdowns, then they were let, let go of the lockdowns early and... Then mm. others went in and out of lockdown. So mm -hmm. it's like even the most successful movies this year, IP driven tent poles. I don't know what that means. <laughs> an IV Have... driven, IP driven tent pole would be like a Marvel product or a Star Wars product. Oh, okay. You know, big name stuff. So like based off of world. Yeah. Like a fictional world of craziness. Gotcha. <laughs> Um, but even the most successful movies this year have underperformed compared to pre-pandemic numbers, save for No Way Home. Insiders say that it is more of a marathon than a sprint. Less than half of a normal year can still be seen as a win for an industry coming off the most challenging two years in its history, said some guy. Said the some guy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Paul. Darn it, Paul. How could Mr. you be Paul. so wrong? It, it's Mr. Paul. That's his last name is Durger Berdadinin. It's <laughs> Durger Durger Rubadian. They're there. Why Close is it? Enough. Yeah. Have you ever actually because we've started reading articles and stuff, have you ever paid attention to the names that come up? Why do people always have such crazy long <laughs> last names? It's like Jim Bob here. Well, Jim Bob picking his nose is fine, but Jim Bob's More... last name is Gersturbederben. Right. He's from St. Olaf, Minnesota. Well, I feel like the more complex 
the last name, the smarter you had to be to make up for being bullied in school. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and now these people have all the insights for all these articles because they're so smart now. <laughs> that explains a lot. My last name was Bird. My maiden name was Bird. So, yeah, no. <laughs> it doesn't uh, get much simpler than that. Yeah. Felt like the animal and everything. That's why you're so, not getting interviews. Gosh darn it. <laughs> you had too simple of a name. I know. It's okay. <laughs> um throughout the pandemic, movie studios have experimented with streaming as an alternative or supplement to theaters. What? Oh, that's movie studios. Yeah. The movie studio. I think studio was the word I was looking for earlier, by the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Any respectable studio wouldn't drag someone's voice into the. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, movie studios have experimented with streaming as an alternative. I mean, yeah, look at Netflix and um, Prime and Disney, D Disney, um, and all that fun stuff. Um, there's even an up and coming one. Um, oh boy, not Hulu, obviously. What the heck was it? I can't remember. It was a very like no name kind of thing but you see the name sometimes i can't remember what it was but but yeah those studios <laughs> yeah or they're trying to be like those studios because they 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 do their own stuff they they uh did the they picked the right avenue. at the time yeah um yeah <laughs> right now because of all these strikes and stuff though um and actually before the strikes all the studios oh. that had launched streaming services now are starting to feel yeah. crash and burn of we can't keep affording to run this thing warner um, brothers released all of its movies this year simultaneously in theaters and on hbo max yeah <laughs> um yeah warner discovery is rumored to be a potential purchaser of Paramount. Hmm. Um, and then Disney is having its struggles with uh, even running the theme parks, which used to subsidize a lot of their stuff was through the theme parks. Um, yeah. They are rumored that there was an article out there that said in probably the next three years, Disney potentially could be sold off in whole to someone like Apple. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see that either. But that's how bad financially off Disney is right now. They're they're going to pull something out of their ass. We all know it. They're going to pull something out of their ass and they're going to save their skins. You know, Apple relied on freaking Microsoft for a second there. They probably right. wouldn't be here if it weren't for that little well that little uh, hand they they helped with. The revival of Apple was all thanks to Steve Jobs coming back and mm -hmm. saying, "Let's be fit. let's do something cool. Let's not just sit around and turn into IBM and having, you know, our little boxes that just do mm -hmm. little pictures and you know, you got to do your spreadsheets on your boxes. Mm -hmm. and so Apple actually kicked off the personal computer market, in my opinion. So, Pro yeah, that's that's um, understandable for sure. Makes a lot of sense. But, but I mean, uh, with, then they got greedy. So, right. That's just my um, with they Disney, they uh, went the status route, not the right. convenience route. Like, we just came out with iPhone 3036. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, the only problem with Disney and their potential of actually being sold off to another company, um, the only reason I say that this is somewhat likely is because all of their financial people, well, not all of them, but their main financial person 
had just quit supposedly because she's having health issues though mm. she seems quite healthy as it is I but mean, we don't know what kind of issues we're talking here true but they've uh their last audit of their books had shown that um they were fudging the numbers on a lot of things oh yeah so well when you're all about image <laughs> right um because they were triple dipping on subscriptions for the disney plus so hulu disney plus and espn were bundled at one time and mm -hmm. Instead of that bundle counting as a single subscription, they counted it as three. I remember you telling me about that. Yeah. About so, Disney doing that. so there was a lot of overinflation. Oh, so you were talking about Disney, not Apple, when you said that their financial person quit. Yeah. Gotcha. My Disney's bad. financial person quit. Apple gotcha. is Apple is Apple. They're still Well, I still doing. think Disney's gonna they have the people, they have the means to scrape out of this. I, I don't think it's going anywhere. There's so many, like, you know, yeah. predictions. Everything could like, change, like, within a few months. But as of today, know. Disney is in such dire straits. Um, their rides are constantly breaking down. Uh, I think... They've been having tons of people fist fighting in the parks. Whoa. Yeah. It's been like. That's a weird straight up problem to have. Yeah. It's like uh, every month there's a story. If you wa look at the Disney blogs that aren't bought off by Disney, they're, they're talking about how there's people fist fighting because someone bumped them or something like that. So it's like. Mm, that. <clears throat> Excuse me. That could happen that anywhere, like, yes. Well, not only that, but it sounds like nothing new. It just sounds like juicy goss at this point. Sorry. A little bit, yes, it is. <laughs> I'll give you that. I said goss. Yeah. I can't believe I actually said goss. I said that because of Bailey Sarian. Like whenever she gets into her podcast, her dark history podcast, she like she says like, let's just sit down and relax and talk about some nice juicy dark history goss. And like <laughs> I don't know, well, I can't say gossip anymore because I like Bailey too much. That's the <laughs> influencer. Just, I'm gonna judge myself for you guys. Don't judge me. I'll do it myself. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the influencers have gotten to you. First they oh, were getting to me, and now they're gotten to, getting to you. I was influenced. But, I mean, you know what? It's Bailey Sarian, and I would, oh, what I would give to go, like, on a, like, coffee run with her. Like, she is <laughs> just awesome. Yeah. I have to say, there are a lot of good content creators out there. Um, so, it's easy yeah. to get influenced by, you go... I'm always entertained by this person, so I always watch him. And now right. I notice my mannerism has changed. What the darn? <laughs> and you know, that's, you know, content creation is also eating up like entertainment. Yep. Like space in people's lives, you know, and in a good way, like, and like, obviously in a lot of bad ways, but like, <laughs> but like, um, you know, Hollywood is not just competing with streaming companies, yeah. but like YouTubers and TikTokers yeah. and, and whatever else is going on. Facebook or I don't meta errors. I don't freaking know what's going on over there, but <laughs> no one knows what's going on over there. I mean, <laughs> For the last, like, three years, Facebook slash Meta has been talking up the Metaverse. You can do everything in VR. Right. I mean, but, look at me. I've watched... Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't know you weren't done with that. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> well, they completely shut that down. Cause, and that's after spending billions of dollars trying to do it. They shut down the Meta thing? The Metaverse? Yeah, they shut down the Metaverse because... 
they decided to move on to the next big thing, which was threads. Oh yeah, threads. That's that's the thing I remember. Yeah. Um, talking with you about that last time. Yep. Okay. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't know. I threw you off. You did. How dare you? Exactly. I do it to myself all the time. But how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say. Um. Uh, if you take me for example. I would honestly much rather sit here and watch a two hour stream of like Evan and Caitlin or even like a half hour <laughs> edited video of Markiplier playing with Bob and Wade on, on Sons of the Forest right. than go to a movie theater right now. Like I'm just not interested in the effort, the money, you know, loss of <laughs> Well, if you look at my YouTube history, which I'm not going to show you people, you're not going to see it. I don't want you seeing all the weird things I watch. Uh, Get us no. to 10 subscribers. <laughs> yes, 10. <laughs> and we'll show you a smidgen of Rise Search history. <laughs> Actually, we're at, we're at 11, so we're good there. Oh, yep. All right. Well, they already <laughs> fulfilled their end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... 50... <laughs> For some reason lately, most of my uh, video watching, here, I'll show it to you, has been manga slash manhwa recaps. Oh, yeah, that's not going to be in it's a like, theater or on a, like, yeah. I mean, well, this. Oh, Snake Discovery. Yes, I always watch Snake Discovery. Yeah. Every time they come up out with something, I watch it. A little huggy hug nose. Aww. She's a chonker. But, um, yeah, my entire watch history, for the most part, has been manhwa recaps. If you don't know what a manhwa is, that is basically the manga equivalent only in Korean. So... Hmm. More webtoon equivalent, because it kind of varies on the way it does it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, for the most part, that's what I watch. Or I watch gaming well, that, Let's Plays. that just goes to show, right. I mean, YouTube is entertainment. And you can find almost anything that tickles your fancy there without the hassle of spending money leaving your house <laughs> exactly it's like <laughs> i don't have to leave my house i just have to let the ad play and i make sure i get more content right or better yet maybe you start your own thing and get your own channel going and you can make money money doing that you know you learn things from youtube like how to be a YouTuber. Right. <laughs> uh, like, obviously, I'm sticking on topic. When I say you learn things, I don't mean yes, generally, but in this situation, you know, in particular, <laughs> how to be a YouTuber. Like, and that's a lot easier to do than taking acting classes. Yeah. <laughs> and moving to Hollywood where things are on fire right now. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like us doing oh, this too podcast. Soon Canada, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, poor I love Canada. you guys. Poor Canada. The smoke has been so bad down here. I don't know if it got all the way down to no, your neck of the woods, but it, like oh, Ohio, it, you would have thought that it was a like fog rolling in, but it wasn't. It was just like just this thick white yeah. smoke everywhere. And um, when we went to Maine, of course, obviously Maine's going to have it too. And, you know, it's just. Yeah, I heard reports of people who even kept their pets inside and their pets were having issues with all the smoke. Aww. So it's like, <laughs> ugh. Poor babies. But this is why you need to have a good, a legitimate reason for environmental agencies is for them to clean up likely things that would catch fire. Now, most of these fires that happened in Canada were actually a result of lightning strikes or things like that, you know, natural causes. So you can't do anything about that. But a lot of stuff down here in the United States 
when they cut back on things during COVID and stuff, the dead limbs and stuff that fell next to roads were just sat there. And that's where most of the United States brush fires had started because people would flick cigarette butts out their window Mm -hmm. or something like that. You know, something that everyone who smokes used to do. So they're just used to doing it. And, but because no one's been maintaining the roadways, clearing out the vegetation that's dried and easy to catch fire, they've been catching fire. Mm -hmm. Of course, there was, there was this one hilariously stupid thing where they were rambling on about how all these forest fires are natural. And then there's a guy in the background who was literally setting things on fire and the news anchor is just going on. How can you say that when the guy who's starting the fire is literally right behind you? Oh, it's like, yeah, we're doing a newscast. We are not observant one bit. There's actually, um, in one of Charlotte Dobre's videos and she's from Canada too. So like, she's, you know, heard all about this stuff, but, um, there's one of the videos she was, um, reacting to was there, there's these like fire station guys. And one of the firefighters was filming and then he pans the camera around. You see the fire station and a couple other firefighters. And then across the street, this woman is raking leaves into like a little fire she had started with gasoline oh. and like the gasoline can was sitting like two feet away from the fire and they were like uh, the caption was like when your city is like um has like a fire ordinance but you old and you too sassy or something it was like <laughs> so ridiculous it's like <laughs> I live in a small town and we can mostly burn whenever we want. But even here, it's like you check and make sure that we're not under a red flag for fires. Otherwise, you're going to burn down our entire town. Right. Are we in a dry spell? Oh. But we've been rambling on for quite some time. It's been entertaining and stuff like that. At least it has been for me. Yeah, it was fun. So, thank you all for listening. Spirit Halloween's taking over Hollywood. And, uh, see you later. Bye. Bye.